Welcome back everyone. We've headed up to Edinburgh to go to Edinburgh Zoo to continue the trip to visit every zoo in the country. And the main reason we're fitting in Edinburgh Zoo so early is because the giant pandas are going back to China in October. So we're here to sort of say goodbye. Yeah. So I came here when they first arrived. Oh. And now we're here when they're leaving. <laughs> um, but if you'd like to follow me on this trip around all the zoos in the country, please hit that subscribe button. I'd love for you to follow along. Let's go see the zoo! So what I like about this enclosure, compared to a lot of flamingo enclosures, is they're netted in, which means they've not had their wings clipped. They can still fly. Oh, they get their wings clipped? In one of the zoos, when you see them in an open paddock, they have their wings clipped. That's how they don't fly away. I didn't realise. But here, they've not done that like most other zoos. And yeah, they are just netted in. These are the sort of mixed species enclosures I like. They're all from similar parts of Africa. So they've got the enrichment of having multiple species in the enclosure. And they're all from roughly the same areas. I think that's a really good idea to do. They also have these how can you help section bits, which are all about how you can use them to help animals that aren't even in this country. So on how you dispose of waste such as oil and milk, farming of coffee, turning off computers and tablets while not using them. This is because really of good. climate change. Yeah. When you come out of the penguin enclosure, they've got a nice history of the penguins at the zoo, going all the way from 1914 up to 2013. We just had a little talk, and this penguin here has a mutation, which means it can't produce the black pigmentation. Is anyone here? Obviously, in the wild, though, will he be killed off? It wouldn't survive. There's a tiny baby penguin. Oh, look at that! Hey, buddy. Oh, look, you trying to eat the rocks. <laughs> Rock some food. Mummy and Daddy will bring you some food. Oh, Echo Beko Bobby Penguin. Oh, you're so cute. Look at you. Yeah, hello, buddy. The rock coral penguins separated from the Gentoo and the Kings because they've had babies, and obviously, being smaller penguins, they're actually quite aggressive with the others, so they've got them in their own little mini paddock at the side at the moment, so they can't fight with the other penguins. And we've spoken to a volunteer as well about the one horned rhino. And they've just moved off a rhino to somewhere in Germany as part of a breeding program. I didn't realize the facility here is too small to breed the rhinos. They need a lot more space so they can keep the males and females separate during non-breeding season, otherwise they fight and then bring them together just for breeding season. And here it hasn't got the space to have the two rhinos separate. So normally what they do is they move the adult males off to other zoos for breeding and then bring in two young males to rear. And so the rhinos are basically reared here before being shipped out to the breeding programs around the rest of the world, which I think is really cool. Yeah like a real combined effort among countries to ensure the survival of this species. So we talked about this at the Bill Wildlife Park as well about how we are wiping out the Scottish wildcat using domesticated cats with breeding and things, basically merging their genes with our domesticated populations and how it's important to neuter your animals. But something I'm very impressed of here is I can't see the cat. This enclosure has a lot of cover for it to hide in and it's really impressive. Obviously, when I say wipe out the wild, Scottish wildcat, I do just mean the Scottish version. Uh, globally, it's of least concern. It has lots of strongholds in other countries. It's just in Scotland. It is now critically endangered, and I think it would be very sad to lose the little guys. I'm hoping we come back later and see them. They've got a whole bit about the breeding program they're doing for Scottish wildcats. All the way around to where they catch them, genetically testing to make sure they're still pure, and then finally get into being released to the wild.
got a great bit here about using bamboo, not the kind of bamboo that the pandas eat, but fast growing bamboo that they don't eat, to create different products with, such as loo roll, just to help protect the forests. Well, we made sure to head to the pandas as quickly as we could. We did have a little detour to the penguins first. That's but so cute. I know, right? They're munching on their bamboo. Oh, I'm so glad I got That's to them so before happy. they go. They yeah. just want to chill in their bamboo. The male was in the grass and the female was like in the Yeah, in a little house. She got out of scratch and walked around. Oh, so happy. And then she just had a stare for a while. Yeah. Like, which, next, which bamboo is my next one? <laughs> I just thought she was going to go sit just in the little bowl of bamboo and just eat from there. It's like, just sit in your food and eat it, why not? But yeah. Aww. Well, goodbye, yeah. giant pandas, I think. I don't know if we'll... And then there's a sign saying, giant goodbye. Yeah, giant Bye. goodbye to them. Bye, pandas. Bye, pandas. <laughs> Although not a multi-species enclosure, the Grevy Zebra have a huge paddock. Look at this. And all back there. The most endangered animals at Edinburgh Zoo, the dinosaurs. And one gull. I wasn't actually going to vlog the dinosaur section, but I like that they've got models with actual feathers. And there's more up there. Talking about how birds are descended from dinosaurs. The tiger enclosure is in two halves, with these walkways across, which kind of remind me of an aquarium tunnel. They can't open their mouths. Their jaw is sealed shut. Just extend their tongue out for a little hole at the end. Oh. And then do they do that? Their tongues are sticky. Ah. So all the termites and ants stick to the tongue. Yeah. How do they swallow? And they, they just swallow like you swallow. But like if it comes at the very end, how do they? No, the tongue retracts back into the mouth. Really? Yeah. Because they can't take back the tongue all the way back yeah. up? Look, look at the, the haze, you can see its tongue coming out here. Yeah, they retract the tongue back into the mouth and then they just swallow them like you would. They have a massive mouth. See the little tongue coming out? Yeah. He doesn't want you to film him. No. He's like, no, no, no. Put no. my arm up, you don't see me. No camera, please.
They're doing research with the capuchins. This is really cool. I just missed it there, but it had a cup and I had to say which one they thought the food was under. They're doing the research with the squirrel monkeys as well. There's now two bits of food in the right hand one and only one in the left. So he's only going to get one bit of food. They want to know if uh, they understand big rewards. Like Compared to small rewards, yeah. yeah. If you can remember the fact that there's three or four in the right hand yeah. one and therefore it's better to take that one. Yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just wants that one though. There's loads in the other one now and he's not getting it. This is the thing, it's not the same food either, so maybe you prefer That's that. why she keeps switching them around. Mm. She's now showing the fact that the white one's going on the right hand side. Let's see if he picks the right hand side one. No, he always wants the left hand side. Mm. This is so interesting. I love that they've got, I love that they've got the public can see this stuff. Mm. A lot of people need to understand like good animal research. Mm. This is still the okay, cost want benefit the stuff. Yeah, so he wants one he wants the white one, the peanut or whatever it is. Is it white? And now we'll see <laughs> what happens. Is he now going to be aware that the one on the left has more food in it? Because that's the point, isn't it? Is there more food than one? It, there will be. Basically, that time there's only one in each. And he took food out of the one on the right hand side, but nothing's been taken out of the one on the left. It still has the food in from the first time. Can he remember that now two have been added into that box mm. and nothing taken out and therefore there's ah. two in it? That's the point of the experiment. So in the end there could be like five in that so one. So right now did... So right now ah. there's none in the right hand side one but there's still one in the left hand side one that was put in there first. Ah. And now she'll add one more which put one in the right, two in the left. But I think they're not continuing this experiment. Mm. Now doing some touch training. Which is still good. So basically the uh, squirrel monkey has to touch where the stick is. And if he does, he gets a reward. Mm -hmm. And it's good for vet examinations and things. So it means you can make them raise their arms and stuff to have a look onto them without having to physically touch them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, up there, monkey reaches for it. Squirrel monkey gets a reward for having done that behaviour. Oh, it said I know who the research subjects are. They've all got a little tag. Yeah. So they can track who's doing what research. The inside enclosures go to the outside via these tunnels here. And, can and we have a pick me mama set. At the back. I don't see him. Oh, I see him up there on the... Oh my god, I'm not going to be on the camera, am I? He's very small. Right back there, that there. Where's he gone? Here he comes. <laughs> Look at Hello, the buddy. mouse. Hello. <laughs> Look at him. Oh. oh, that was cool. You're going to go through the tunnel? There he goes, through the tunnel. And into the inside area. Where did he go in it? Oh, he's still up there. We now Look have an animal I've primate. never heard of. That's a grey leg duraculi called owl monkeys. Oh, he yawning. Is the daytime tiring for you, buddy?
sloths and armadillos are a walkthrough enclosure. Exciting. This is a very impressive chimp building. I haven't seen the enclosure yet. There's a walkthrough up there. The town section there. Similarity between our skeletons, shown there. Human, chimp, Columbus monkey handprints. think, looking at this, which must be feeding in Richmond, they have to use the twigs to get food out of the holes like they would a termite mind in the wild. There's nothing happening at the moment, but they're also doing research with the chimps, like the squirrel monkeys and the capuchins. So the research is completely voluntary from a chimpanzee point of view. They can enter and leave the research facility as and when they please. If they choose to leave the research, they don't take part. If they choose to never enter the research, but they don't take part. It's 100% voluntary from the chimpanzee's point of view, and that I really like. So they said they have to make the research stimulating and fun, or the chimpanzee isn't going to want to take part, because it just wants to be able to think and be intelligent. I really like that. I'm very impressed with the size of the enclosure. It's got three separate internal environments. The research area they can go play in voluntarily, and then this massive outside area as well. I don't think I've ever seen a chimp enclosure so big. It's really stimulating for them because obviously being such an intelligent species that's really important to do to keep them in captivity. And hopefully the research helps show more of what they need to keep them happy in captivity so we can keep the breeding programs going. Baby the lost monkey on the left has was born about six days ago. As you look at the bottom face, see the fingers of the is that his foot holding on. At the back of their enclosure as well, two bits of feeding enrichment. We've got a little puzzle there, and another one up there. I always love seeing feeding enrichment in zoos. I think this is a good sign of improvement in zoos. This is the old monkey enclosure, still in use. But based on the front, I think maybe they're planning to redevelop the area because obviously the capuchins are now in that large research area. And we've still got these ones just here. Popcorn bears. Hello, Binturong. Oh, look at the team, it's so cute. Uh, there we go, it's the last animal we've not seen today. I smell that popcorn. See, yeah. they're weird. <laughs> the zoo is breeding fennel to help boost the numbers of pine hoverfly in the country because their uh, population is declining.
So that's Edinburgh Zoo over with. An amazing day out. Yeah. I mean, so many years, and I, I'm impressed with the changes that have happened in the last like 12 years since I last came here, something like that. It's been a long time. And they've changed a lot. The research stuff, that really blew my mind. I didn't know they did that, but you oh, can yeah, actually see the great. research labs. Obviously, seeing the pandas was the reason we came, but the highlight may have been just seeing them doing the studies. Like, mm. I've not seen a zoo with those kind of facilities before. That's great. No, and that the whole really... zoo is really good. Like, it's also a very environmentally friendly zoo, and they say science all the time. Like you've seen with, um, with the signs of each animal, like there's something we can do as well to help. Yeah, well that's just happened global warming or you know, stopping it, not encouraging it. Um, or it, even yeah. everything, like they have, even the toilet paper was like sustainable. Yeah, everything. It's <laughs> uh, there's zero waste zoo. Except from the gift, gift shop. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of crap in there. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. The shop does sell some pretty good stuff as well, though. So we've got a couple of pin badges, actually the same pin badge each with the pandas, to remember the fact that we came here to say goodbye to the pandas, and a lovely bit of art which I got, which I think is gorgeous. Uh, and the artist who does it actually just, they hired the artist to paint animals of the zoo, and it, it had a wide range of things that had been painted by him. But I got one that had like a, uh, well, I'll show you it on the screen now, but of the animals going up from sort of the smallest meerkat. All the way up through to a rhino. So yeah, I love this bit of art. I love this sort of art in general actually. But yeah, yeah I was really impressed nice. with it. There's a lot of uh, toys and stuff that are yeah, like, like not very good and um, plasticky, but yeah. Yeah, there's kind, of, kind of two sides anyway. like they don't take money and those big inflatable things do the kids buy them. They're popular, but, but yeah. let's be honest, most parents are gonna put them in landfill of like two weeks of the kids buying it. It's but they gonna... do a lot of like good uh, raising awareness of like climate change and everything like this, so I think yeah. it's really good. On site, they more than make up for it, definitely. Like the science alone gives so much information. You just stop to read. You couldn't have enough time to read all of them, but even reading a few of them, you learn a lot. Yeah, you like, learn a lot. It's been really interesting today. On a lot of different subjects. Yeah. This is why we took so long on the morning, and then we had to like stop reading everything. Yeah. Because it was so much interest, so many interesting facts, and not just for children, I think. Yeah, it'd been like two hours, and we realized we'd done like only a tiny session of the Zoom. We're like, how the hell have two hours gone by? Yeah. We're like, okay, we can't read as much anymore. There's too much to read. Let's keep it's going. Afraid. That's not a bad thing in any way. In the end, thing. at the end, we had lots of time, plenty of other time to redo some like enclosure that we didn't see yeah, very well so we before. Yeah, so we dashed we got so to see the bins wrong in the end, we saw the wildcat walking around. Yeah, there's plenty of time for a long break at lunch in there, I think. We went to a garden devoted to medicinal plants, that was quite oh, interesting. Oh yeah, that was cool, yeah, I, I like that. I skipped that thing and prioritised, let's prioritise the animals, but when we had a little bit of time left at the end, I was like, no, we'll go back and have a look at it, because that was actually really not, interesting. For me, it's not the point of the zoo, but it's really nice that they do that. It's a little add-on to make people interested in other stuff as well. Yeah. Like it's just a bite size of something else, which I think is good. Uh, yeah, and it goes into something that I think is quite important. And it's zoos are really big on the whole animals are going extinct, and that is a major issue. But plants are also going extinct, and we kind of ignore uh, that. Yeah. I think a little bit. Like it talks about the fact that twenty percent of known plant species are going extinct. If they go extinct, the ecosystems get damaged. If the ecosystems get damaged, animals there's it, the effect rolls on towards animals and ha damaging them even more so. So we need to address both the plant side with things like palm oil and sustainable, you know, growth of what are agricultural systems, and the animals. You have to target everything. Targeting one area will not fix any of the problems we're doing to this planet. A bit preachy, I know, but it's important. No, it's a, it's <laughs> a very good point, and I like also that they tied it up to the animals knowledge that uh, um, we do aromatherapy and stuff like that and medicinal plants but actually animals do it instinctively yeah so it was really nice to read that yeah like Putin's uh, using citrus plants and things for antibacterial properties and all that it's, it's very interesting very interesting yeah um, there's a good tie-in and there's like it's a very like hiking zoo so for me it was a bonus because I like a good hike and you have wonderful views all over the zoo oh, gorgeous. of like yeah beautiful of the surroundings, um, but it's not suitable for everybody. Yeah, you need to. Be, you have to have some level of physical stamina to get around it. They do ask at the yeah. very start. Yeah, they do. They warn you about the, how hilly it is, and if you want to get around. I'm sure they probably have ways, to, advice to give you. I thought if you said you weren't happy with it, I'm sure they'd give you some advice on how to get around. But and we could see that some yeah. people needed to have like a little car around. Yeah, little golf buggy things. So yeah, they, they probably accommodate you quite heavily. I thought to get around the zoo, but yeah, once you're at the top, the view is incredible. I'm um, up from where the giraffes and that are really nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. No, I was really impressed with this zoo, and yeah, I'm not a big zoo fan, 
but I really love that. I'm a hugely fan, but yeah, I must admit, I, I, big enclosures, plenty of space for the animals. Yeah, I get. I think to do like London highlights where we're going with improving because uh, like the old yellow capuchin enclosures, they're not good. They're, they're clearly and we saw at the very end. Uh, I didn't actually film it, but uh, red bay lemur enclosure that's clearly like from the 90s, and they've got the new walkthrough lemur enclosure. The capuchins are now obviously the brown ones uh, are in the the big enclosure with the research, and you see like these amazing new enclosures, and you see the old ones. I'm assuming at some point are going to get demolished. But you, it's nice to be able to see, nice to be able to see where we were and where we're going and how zoos are still moving on. Mm. And that's important because I think some zoos are still left in that 1990s, early 2000s era with enclosures that really aren't fit to purpose with what we now know in the modern standard. And it's really good to see zoos really reinvesting into what they're doing because that will help with breeding programs. It generally helps with enrichment of the animal and you know, stopping stereotypic behaviours and happiness of the animals while they're in captivity which is just really going to reinforce in the long run our ability to get them back out into the wild when, well, when we fix the problems they're currently experiencing in their wild populations. But yeah, thank you for joining us on this trip to Edinburgh Zoo. I would love to see you for the rest of the zoos we're visiting around the country. So subscribe if you would like to follow along and hopefully I'll see you all for the next one. Bye guys. Bye.